Hello and welcome to Cloud Learners Journey Part 2 of Azure Administrator Associate Real Exam Questions and Answers with Explanation and References which you can find in the description. So let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe to our Cloud Learners Journey YouTube channel to help you pass the AZ104 exam and become an Azure Administrator Associate. Question number one. Your company has an Azure subscription. You need to deploy a number of Azure virtual machines using Azure Resource Manager, ARM templates. You have been informed that the VMs will be included in a single availability set. You are required to make sure that the ARM template you configure allows for as many VMs as possible to remain accessible in the event of fabric failure or maintenance. Which of the following is the value that you should configure for the platform fault domain count property? And the options are A 10, B 30, C minimum value, D maximum value. And the correct answer is maximum value. Each virtual machine in availability set is assigned an update domain and a fault domain by the underlying Azure platform. Each availability set can be configured with up to 3 fault domains and 20 update domains. Next, question number 2. You plan to create an Azure storage account in the Azure region of East US 2. You need to create a storage account that meets the following requirements. Replicates synchronously. Remain availability if a single data center in the region fails. How should you configure the storage account? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. And the options are like for the replication, geo, redundant storage, GRS, locally redundant storage, read access geo redundant storage, zone redundant storage. And for account type, blob storage, storage general purpose v1 storage v2 general purpose v2 the correct answers are for application zone redundant storage zone redundant storage replicates your data synchronously across three storage clusters in a single region lrs would not remain available if a data center in the region fails drs and ra GRS use asynchronous replication and the account type is storage v2 general purpose v2 ZRS only support general purpose v2 next question number three you have an azure subscription named subscription one you have 5 TB of data that you need to transfer to subscription one you plan to use an Azure import export job. What can you use as the destination of the import exported data? And the options are A virtual machine, B an Azure Cosmos DB database, C Azure file storage, D the Azure file sync storage sync service. And the correct option is C Azure file storage. Azure Import Export Service is used to securely import large amounts of data to Azure Blob Storage and Azure Files by shipping disk drives to an Azure data center. The maximum size of an Azure file resources of a file share is 5 TB. Like there are several versions of this question in the exam. The question has two correct answers. Either it can be an Azure File Storage or Azure Blob Storage. The question can have other incorrect answer options that includes Azure Data Lake Store, Azure SQL Database, Azure Data Factory. Question number four. You have an Azure storage account named Storage One that uses Azure Blob Storage and Azure File Storage. You need to use AZ Copy to copy data to the blob storage and file storage in storage one which authentication method should you use for each type of storage to answer select the appropriate options in the answer area 
or blob storage we do have azure active directory only shared access signature only access case and shared access signature only and the other options and similar to the file storage yeah like you can provide authorization details by using azure active directory or by using a shared access signature which is a sas token for the blob storage the correct answer is azure active directory and shared access signatures only azure active directory and shared access signature token are supported for blob storage and for the file storage is shared access signature only only shared access signature token is supported for file storage next question number 5 you have an app named app1 that runs on two azure virtual machines named vm1 and vm2 you plan to implement an azure availability set for app1 the solution must ensure that app1 is available during planned maintenance of the hardware hosting vm1 and vm2 what should you include in the availability set and the options are one update domain b two fault domain c one fault domain d two update domains and the correct answer is two update domains microsoft updates which up microsoft refers to as planned maintenance events sometimes require that vms be rebooted to complete the update to reduce the impact on vms azure fabric is divided into update domains to ensure that not all vms are rebooted at the same time next question number 6 you administer a solution in azure that is currently having performance issues you need to find the cause of the performance issues pertaining to metrics on the azure infrastructure which of the following is the tool you should use and the options are a azure traffic analytics b azure monitor c azure activity log d azure advisor and the correct option is b azure monitor metrics in azure monitor are stored in a time series database which is optimized for analyzing time stamp data this makes metrics partially suited for alerting and fast detection of issues next question number 7 you have a deployment template named template 1 that is used to deploy 10 azure web apps you need to identify what to deploy before you deploy template 1 the solution must minimize azure cost what should you identify and the options are a five azure application gateways b one app service plan c 10 app service plans d one azure traffic manager e one azure application gateway and the correct option is one app service plan you create azure web apps in an app service plan one app service plan supports up to 10 web apps next question number 8 your company has an azure active directory subscription you need to deploy five virtual machines to your company's virtual network subnet the vms will each have both a public and private ip address inbound and outbound security rules for all these virtual machines must be identical which of the following is the least amount of security groups needed for this configuration and the options are a4 b3 c2 d1 and the option is d1 we can have a single nsg network security group and attach it to that single subnet under which all five vms exist this nsg will have common inbound and outbound rules next question number 9 you have an azure active directory tenant named adatom.com adatom.com contains the groups in the following table the columns 
headings are name, group type, membership type, membership role. Group 1 has a security group type, the dynamic user membership type, and the membership role is users.city starts with M. Similarly, we do have for the group 2 and group 3. You create two user accounts that are configured as shown in the following table. The columns are like name, city, department, office 365, license assigned. User 1 with Montreal City, Human Resources Department and Office 365 license assigned, yes. Similar to user 2. Of which groups are user 1 and user 2 members? To answer, select the appropriate options in the answer area. User 1, do have like group 1, group 2, group 3, group 1 and 2, group 1 and group 3. Similarly, other options. It do have the user 2 as well. The correct answer is user 1 with group 1 only. It, it has only the first membership rules which applies and user 2 group 1 and group 2 only next question number 10 you have an Azure Active Directory tenant that has the contestor.on microsoft.com domain name you have a domain name of contestor.com registered at a third party registrar you need to ensure that you can create Azure AD users that have names containing a suffix of at contestor.com which three actions should you perform in sequence and the correct answer is add a custom domain add a record to the public contestor.com dns zone verify the domain first we need to add the custom domain name to your directory Add a DNS entry for the domain name at the domain name registrar. And the third, verify the custom domain name in Azure AD. Next question number 11. You have an Azure subscription named subscription1. In subscription1, you create an alert rule named alert1. The alert1 action group is configured as shown in the following exhibit. It has the resource group name. And the group short name ag1 and has the other options below alert one alert criteria triggered every minute use the user drop down menu to select the answers choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic the number of email messages that alert one will send in an hour is 60 one alert per minute will trigger one email per minute and the number of sms messages that alert 2 will send in an hour is 12. no more than one sms every five minutes can be sent which equals 12 per hour rate limiting is a suspension of notification that occurs when too many are sent to a particular phone number email address or device rate limiting ensures that alerts are manageable and actionable the rate limit thresholds are for sms no more than one sms every five minutes for the voice no more than one voice call every five minutes email no more than 100 emails in an hour next question number 12 you have an Azure subscription named AZPT1 that contains the resources shown in the following table. And the table has the name and the type. Storage1, VNet1, VM1, VM1 managed, or Vault1. You create a new Azure subscription named AZPT2. You need to identify which resources can be moved to AZPT2. Which resources should you identify? And the options are VM1, Storage1, VNet1, and VM1 Managed Only. B, VM1 and VM1 Managed Only. C, VM1, Storage1, VNet1, VM1 Managed, and Rvault1. 
T R volt one only and the correct answer is VM1 storage one VNet one VM1 managed and R volt one all of them moving a resource only moves it to a new resource group or subscription it doesn't change the location of the resource next question number 13 you have an Azure Active Directory tenant named contestor.onmicrosoft.com that contains 100 user accounts. You purchase 10 Azure AD Premium P2 licenses for the tenant. You need to ensure that 10 users can use all the Azure AD Premium features. What should you do? Of the options are A. From the license blade of Azure AD, assign a license. B. From the group's blade of each user invite the users to a group see from the azure ad domain add an enterprise application d from the directory role blade of each user modify the directory role and the correct answer is a from the license blade of azure ad assign a license sign into azure portal select active directory and then select licenses under license blade select all products and then select azure active directory premium p2 licenses and then assign a user to it Next question number 14 you have an azure load balancer named lb1 you assign a user named user1 the roles shown in the following exhibit user1 assignments lb1 and it does have the two roles user access administrator and the virtual machine contributor and the scope for the virtual machine contributor is resource group which is inherited use the drop down menu to select the answer choice that completes each statement based on the information presented in the graphic user 1 can dash lb1 so the correct answer is user one can assign access to other users for lb1 user one can assign access to other users because of user access administrator role second user one can delete a virtual machine from the resource group user one can delete virtual machine because of virtual machine contributor role Contributor grants full access to manage all resources, but doesn't allow you to assign roles in Azure rollback. Managed assignments in Azure blueprints or share image galleries. Next question number 15. You have an Azure subscription that contains 10 virtual machines, a key vault named Vault 1 and a network security group named NSG1. All the resources are deployed to the East US Azure region. The virtual machines are protected by using NSG1. NSG1 is configured to block all unbound traffic to the internet. You need to ensure that the virtual machines can access Vault 1. The solution must use the principle of least privilege and minimize administrative effort. What should you configure as the destination of the outbound security role for NSG1? And the options are a an application security group b a service tag c an ip address range and the option is a service tag to ensure that the virtual machines can access vault one while minimizing administrative effort and using the principle of least privilege you should configure a service tag as the destination of the outbound security rule for nsg1 azure key vault tag can be used in outbound network security groups thank you for watching part 2 of azure administrator associate real exam questions and answers we hope you found it informative and helpful if you like the video please like share and subscribe to our channel and comment for more related topics we look forward to continuing the journey with you in the next videos thank you